Okay guys, so after dissecting the Gibby crash bars out of their housing and getting to the instructions, we're gonna start here. The first step would be to remove this, uh, if you have a KLR stock skid plate, remove this skid plate. There's two bolts up here and two bolts down here. So once you're done that, continue on to the next step. Okay guys, so now we got the hole obviously down here now that skid plate is now off the bike. It was just those four bolts and it drops right out. Uh, the next step that I see, they don't really explain it very clearly in the step-by-step -step directions, but you have to remove this bracket. These three bolts here have to come off and that way this all comes out so you can get access to it. So what I used is a 12 millimeter long socket because I didn't have the short one with an extension. So just to get in here and uh, loosen these bolts up. So that's what we're gonna we're gonna try to attempt to do now. I think it's a 12. I thought it was a 12. Unless I didn't grab the right one. It says a 12. Okay, the 12 fits on this one, and it fits on that one. This is a different bolt size, so that might be. 13 maybe? Uh, no. 14? Yes. So this one over here is a 14 millimeter, and these two over here are 12 millimeters. So you're going to want to remove that, uh, that bracket with those two separate socket and have an extension. It makes it a loads easier. So be back in a minute. Okay, I'm coming back. Um, I haven't got this off because me being a dummy, um, you need a box wrench, 12 mil and a 14 mil box wrench. You gotta put it on the other side of the bolt, otherwise this is just gonna keep, it's gonna keep spinning on you. So put the wrench on one side of the engine and put the driver on the other, the wrench on the other and then t the wrench and then the the socket on the other and then just hold the wrench and then turn the socket and it'll prevent it from spinning so i'll be back in a second okay guys as you can see with a little finesse the bracket that was once there is now off so now we'll move on to the next step okay guys now we inched our way backwards on the bike to the y-frame piece that runs down the bike to the Right by the kickstand is down here. The kickstand is right here. And this is the back piece coming off the rear frame. You want to hit this bolt where it intersects and you want to take that off and remove it. You'll need a 12 millimeter uh, socket to attach to here and crank it loose. So now we have the first uh, bolt put on. So you're going to put this bolt in here. There's a washer that you also need which will be this big fat black washer will slide I believe either I think it's either here or here in between the frame I believe it's actually probably out here um, because the crash bar uh, it's probably out behind the crash bar because here's the crash bar okay crash bar is gonna mount here like so and I believe the washer is gonna slip in behind it like this and sit between the frame and the crash bar. So that's what you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna go bolt, crash bar, and then nut, crash bar, bolt, and slide it in like this, and just tighten this down. It'll thread right in, um, because it matches the factory bolt that's, or nut that's behind this piece here. So once you get that done, we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, actually I'm going to come back to this. Um, it is not a 12 mil. This is now a 14 millimeter bolt. The uh, previous bolt that you pulled off the bike, which is here, this one is a 12 mil. So you're going to switch to 12 mil with a 14 mil and you're going to screw that in. Now what I did was is I screwed this in, but not all the way. So it has some play to it here so we can, can adjust the bar because if I move the camera over here, here's that Y joint 
where you had that bracket here before. Now I can adjust this bar up and down so I can sit the bracket properly where it's supposed to be. Um, but that's not the next step. We'll go on and continue on to what the so-called directions here say to do. So, Okay, I'm across the bike now. Um, what you're going to want to do is do the exact same thing on the side of the bike. So you're going to use a 12 mil wrench socket here. You're going to break it loose. And just loosen this up. Threading this piece out. So actually we may need to install that crash bar in the center first, but right now we're just going to roll with this. Um, you're going to go ahead and take your crash bar. You're going to line it up with the hole, but first you want to thread this through first. You want to put your bolt, crash bar, washer setup, and you're going to want to line it up right here in this hole. And then I'm just going to finger tighten it first. You should always um, finger tighten the bolts first because you don't want to strip anything. That would be very bad and a lot of waste a lot of money because you didn't finger tighten the bolts first. And then you're just going to finish it off with a uh, 14 millimeter socket to tighten the bad boy back up again. Which I'll do right here. You want to keep in mind you want to watch up to your right here. You want to watch the crash bar uh, bar cross support. You want to make sure it's above this exhaust pipe. It's going to sit up here like this. So it runs right in front of the carburetor, right straight across underneath. I believe that's a fuel line, I think, but don't quote me on that. Um, so that way these two over here will line up with each other right here. I, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> so. I will come back when that is completed. Alright, I do apologize, but we're going to go back. We're not going to go up to the front. We're going to go back to the crash bar, or the crossbar here, in the middle, right in front of the carb. Um, I figured, I thought about it for a minute, so that's probably the best idea to do, so I apologize for going back and forth, but... Um, what you're going to need for this is these screws that are actually Allen key screws. Um... It says 8 by 20 millimeter, um, but I don't actually know. So what I did was I went to my Allen set, found a s Allen key close enough to fit, and we're going to go ahead and tighten these two down on either side of the crash bar in hopes to line it up correctly. Let's see here. Again, finger tighten the bolt first before using the Allen key to tighten it the rest of the way down. Grab your Allen key. Just slowly tighten. I already have the other one on the other side already pre-started on the bike. So we're going to just go ahead and tighten these two down and we'll come back to the part, the next part of putting the uh, putting the front piece on the crash bar, so stay tuned for that. Okay guys, I'm going to switch back over to the GoPro for this part. Um, so before we put those crash bars and connect them together, as you see in photo here, there is a part that goes in between here, which is here. So this is it. So this is going to go in between your two crash bars on your right and left side of your bike. It has two O-rings that you're going to want to put on either side of this middle piece so it protects it from rubbing and damaging them. Um, so as it shows here in the picture. And then I'm not exactly sure how it's supposed to slide together. It shows... I'm guessing this is the factory bolts going through the frame and to the other side and this is just in the middle. So we're going to do that next. I'm going to switch back over to the other camera to get a better picture of that. Okay, we're back to the front of the bike. Um, very important um, note. Before you screw these two bars on either side here together uh, through this part in the middle, 
make sure you put this piece in because that protects that and if you line them up you want to take both o-rings that they supply you and put them on either side and you just want to slip it through the bar which i may have to actually unloosen one of the crash bars because sides because i didn't expect it to be so tight in here to fit this thing or i should have put this on before because see how it can't it can't move it apart far enough to get the this in here so i'm probably gonna have to loosen up the bar retighten it and put this in okay as you can see now that piece is now in the in between the two bars in the center um had to loosen both sides of the crash strut bar in the middle in order for it to uh give me enough play to retighten the other bolt up here on the top right so but now we have a little bit of lead way we can move this um so we can go ahead and try to reinstall those factory bolts which will be right over here so again like i said before uh 12 millimeter 12 millimeter 14 millimeter slide the bolt in and then put the nut on the other side and just tighten them down and they should be good to go okay as you can see the bolts are back on sturdy the bike's not the bars aren't going anywhere now um i took the liberty to to tighten up the crossbar bolt which i'll move the camera here to show you up here so that's both those bolts on either side of the bike across from it also are tightened down and i tightened down these rear bolts here at the back of the crash bar um, so now the final step in the process is to reinstall your skid plate um, using two of the screws that they provided which are these little tiny it's not going to focus but these little tiny black ones and then they have the little washer or the little nuts with it those are going to go up front they're going to go down here i'll move the camera to kind of see if i can get a better angle um right about right about there here this little hole here that's where you're going to put your bolt through and then the nut on the other side of the skid plate and then you're going to use the bottom two are going to attach as normal with the normal bolt so i'll get that on and then i'll show you what it looks like after okay ladies and gentlemen two and a half hours later we have the Gibby crash bars on the bike um, the only thing you missed me do was put this on and put these uh, little tiny rep plates on which they say Gibby on them and they showed a picture of it on the, the bar but it wasn't even for my bike it was for like a BMW or something and it said it had a center bar between here something that you could mount it to and well clearly this is not meant for this bike but I put it on there anyway I may or may not keep those I might take those off because it might not work right there's one on here and then on the other side but on the KLR, it only came out between here and here. And on the other side, it's like right next to the point, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, the one problem I think Gibby has with their crash bar setup, it went together all nicely until you got to here. Um, and this was a pain in the dick to get these two freaking bolts in the top here. They need to really take this and apply another about quarter inch of steel down lower because this is a, just a pain in the ass to get these in. Um, I don't know what else to, how else to say. It's just a pain in the ass. So we're going to just call it that. So, all right, now I'm going to move on. To the other part of the video with uh, the exhaust also by the way i wanted to go through the necessary equipment you're going to need for that uh gibby uh exhaust or gibby crash bars i'm sorry i'm trying to work on the exhaust but i used uh a 10 mil socket a 12 mil socket a 14 mil socket all also wrenches included and there's also you'll need an 8 mil socket to get these bottom bolts in also you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket mainly every socket you have you should have a wrench with it 
Um, you're also going to need an Allen wrench key. Um, luckily, I ended up finding one that fits for these top uh, hex bolts up here to put them in for the crossbar. And you're going to need a screwdriver if you want to put these Givy side little plastic covers on. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive into this Two Brothers carbon fiber exhaust and try to put it on hopefully a little faster than the Givy crash bars went on. All right, 